Coffee Break Italian Season 1, Episode 12. Buongiorno a tutti e benvenuti a Coffee Break Italian. Io sono Mark. Buongiorno a tutti e io sono Francesca. Ciao a tutti, io sono Katie. Come state oggi? Ah, molto bene, grazie. Sì, molto bene, grazie. Anch'io sto bene oggi. Well, we're back with another lesson of Coffee Break Italian for you. And this week we're going to be talking about something a little different. We're going to be talking about il cibo. Katie, any idea what that might be? Absolutely no idea, I'm afraid. Well, if I tell you that in un ristorante c'è molto cibo. Mm, food? Yes, yeah. in a restaurant there's lots of food, that's right. So we're going to be talking about food today. I think it's about time to begin. Yes, iniziamo. Iniziamo. Now, just before we get started with the topic of il cibo, let's do some recap from last lesson. So, Katie, I wonder if you can remember this and I wonder if our listeners can also remember all of the drinks we learned last time. How would we say, for example, I would like a tea with lemon and for my friend, a female friend, an apple juice. Let's give our listeners some time to think about it, and then Katie can answer it. I would like a tea with lemon, and for my female friend, an apple juice. Okay, Katie? Could I say, vorrei un tè con limone, e per la mia amica, un succo di mela. Ok, molto bene, Katie. Eh, ma attenzione, just two tiny little things. Amica. Amica. Ok, molto bene. E un succo di mela. Un succo di mela. Perfetto, perfetto this time. Ok, so I would like a tea with lemon and for my female friend an apple juice. Let's try another one of these. What about for my father, a cappuccino? For my mother, a glass of white wine. And for me, an sparkling mineral water. Okay, I'll, I'll say that again and we'll give you some time to think about it. For my father, a cappuccino. For my mother, a glass of white wine. And for me, a sparkling mineral water. Okay, so Katie, can you give us your order, please? Okay, if I can remember. Per mio padre, un cappuccino. Per mia madre, un bicchiere di vino bianco. E per me, un acqua gasata. Perfetto. Sì, bravissima, Katie. Okay, excellent. I think we'll leave our recap there because there are so many things we could actually be recapping. But I think it's time to move on to some new content in the form of some food. Now, imagine the scenario. You're arriving at a restaurant and you're going to be asking for a table. We're going to use, in fact, we could use two words here. We could use a word that we already know. How would you say, is there? Katie. C'è. C'è. Benissimo. And if you were to ask, is there a table? You could say, c'è un tavolo. C'è un tavolo. Sì, perfetto. So if you were asking, is there a table available? Then you can simply say, c'è un tavolo. However, we can also use another word here. And that word would be, do you have a table? Now, Think about this carefully, because when you ask a restaurant owner or the person at the, the front of the restaurant, do you have a table? That you is not really asking that one person specifically. You're asking the restaurant and the staff in the restaurant, do you all have a table? Do you all have a table? Do you have a table? So we're going to use a different word that we've not used before for do you have? And that word is avete. So you can say do you have a table? Avete un tavolo? Avete un tavolo? Avete un tavolo? 
So do you have a table? And of course, the most likely answer to this would be how many people or for how many people? Per quanti? Per quanti? It's unlikely that you'll have to say that yourself if you're doing the, <laughs> the, the asking for the table, but you need to understand that. So per quanti, in answer to the question, you can say for four. Katie, how would you say that? Per quattro. Okay, if it were for eight. Per otto. If it were for mm, two. Per due. Okay. And if it were for one person? Per uno. <laughs> you could say sì. per uno. Or for one person. Per una persona. Sì, certo. Per una persona. Allora, si potrebbe dire per due, per tre, per quattro o per una persona. O per uno anche. Sì, per uno. I was just thinking, would it be uno even if you were a woman? Or... Do you need to change that? Uh, no, you can use per uno, even if you are a woman. You don't need to say per una. You could say un tavolo per me instead. Okay. Remember that uno is the counting word when you're counting one, uno, due, tre, quattro, and so on. So you're really saying for one. But as soon as it becomes for one person or for 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 a person, then you have to say per una persona. Sì. Okay, so you've asked, is there a table free? You've confirmed the number of people it's for, and then you're very likely to be told, okay, come this way or follow me or something like that. And the most common way or the most likely way of that being said in Italian would be that very common word. Prego. Prego. Literally, it means I pray. So if you're saying... Prego, it's, it's like saying, pretty, follow me, come with me, I pray. So, prego is how you would be invited to follow the waiter or the, the maitre d' into the restaurant. There is, of course, the situation where the, where the restaurant may not have a table. In that case, what are you likely to hear, Francesca? Uh, scusi, siamo al completo. So, listen to that again. Scusi, siamo al completo. So, I'm sorry. Or excuse us, you know. We are full. Siamo al completo. We are at the complete. Siamo al completo. Do you want to try saying that, Katie? Just in case you're ever working in a in an Italian restaurant. Siamo al completo. Benissimo. Okay, so you are sitting at your table. The next thing you're likely to ask for would be... The menu. Yep. And the menu is very straightforward. Francesca? Il menu. What's your stress there? Il menu. Il menu. Okay. So you might be given the menu. And what if you were a little bit worried about understanding everything in the menu? You already know how to piece together the phrase for this. And this is what Coffee Break Italian is all about. We don't just want you to learn phrases. We want you to learn the words and the constructions so that you can actually make these phrases up yourself. So if you wanted to ask... Is there a menu in English? How would you say that? C'è un menu in inglese? Benissimo. Perfetto. That's exactly how you would say it. So, is there a menu in English? C'è un menu in inglese? Sì, perfetto. O avete un menu in inglese? Perfetto. So that's the other option. We can use c'è, is there, or avete, do you have, when you're talking to lots of people. Do you have, or when you're talking to the, the organization of the restaurant, as it were, maybe you're just speaking to the one waiter who's uh, attending your table, but equally you're still talking about, do you, as in this restaurant, have a menu in English? You might also want to ask, do you have a menu for children? Maybe some restaurants would have that kind of scenario, in which case you would say... Avete un menu per bambini? Or c'è un menu per bambini? Listen to the word for children again. Bambini. So bambini is, of course, the plural form here. So one male child would be... Bambino. Mm-hmm. And a female child would be? Maybe Katie can guess. Mm, una bambina. Sì, perfetto. So then we have 
children and the, the male and female are just male. Bambini. And if it were lots of little girls, it would be... Bambine. So that's our pattern again. Bambino, masculine singular. Bambina, feminine singular. Bambini, masculine plural, or indeed together masculine and feminine plural. And then if it's feminine plural, it would become bambine. So is that just the same as figli, meaning children in general? Exactly. Just as figli, you also have fratelli for brothers and sisters, zi for aunts and uncles, nonni for grandparents, and so on. Okay, I think it's about time that we learn some words for some of the kind of things that may be on a menu. Let's think perhaps first about uh, lunchtime and if we were having a quick snack or something. So let's learn some of the types of things that we may have to eat. First of all, a very common thing would be a, a bread roll. Un panino. Now this is a little bit tricky. It's one of the things that we need to think carefully about because the word for a bread roll would be... Un panino. But in English, certainly in UK English, we very often talk about a panini. And of course, that's wrong because panini is plural. We know that panini would be more than one bread yes. roll. But of course, if we're talking about in Italian, then un panino would be a bread roll. And you could have a bread roll with ham in it. Mm, I love it. Un panino al prosciutto. Un panino al prosciutto. Okay, so watch that prosciutto, double a T at the end. Un panino al prosciutto. Un panino al prosciutto. Good. Or you could have a cheese bread roll. Mm -hmm. Un panino al formaggio. We've got another double consonant sound in there. So try saying a cheese roll. Un panino al formaggio. Perfetto. Okay, so un panino, a, a bread roll of some kind, with a filling. Perhaps any other fillings that you can think of that would be common, Francesca? Eh, personally, I love uh, un panino con pomodoro e mozzarella. Ah, <laughs> un panino con pomodoro e mozzarella. So we probably know what mozzarella is. Mozzarella cheese. Un tipo di formaggio, non è sì. vero? E anche con pomodoro, which would be... Tomato? Tomato. So, un panino con pomodoro e mozzarella. Sì, perfetto. Un panino con pomodoro e mozzarella. You could also say al pomodoro e mozzarella. So, Katie, try saying both those versions. Un panino con pomodoro e mozzarella. Un panino con pomodoro e mozzarella. And the alternative one using al. Un panino al pomodoro e mozzarella. So, we have spoken about panino, un panino, or the plural form panini, mm -hmm. bread rolls. But we also may come across a sandwich. A sandwich would be... Un tramezzino. Francesca, can you explain what un tramezzino would look like? Uh, it's like a sandwich you would have here. The shape is like a triangular shape. Okay, and so it's made from, from sort of normal bread, sliced bread with a filling. Yes, the bread you would use for toasts. Okay, so un tramezzino would be that kind of sandwich, a, a sort of traditional sandwich that we get here in the UK or perhaps in the States. Un tramezzino. Un tramezzino. And perhaps another kind of snack that you might have is a salad. Sì, un, uh, un insalata. Un insalata. Perfetto. So those are a few simple snacks that you may have uh, when you're ordering something for lunch. But another very common thing that you might be eating in Italy, of course, is una pizza. Which, of course, we know. A pizza. <laughs> a pizza, indeed. Una pizza. But let's talk a little bit about the pizza toppings. And this gives us a good opportunity to talk about more vocabulary, more vocabulary for our food. And indeed, look a little more carefully at the plurals. So let's begin with the kind of basic topics on topics. Your toppings, of course, not your <laughs> topics. Toppings on a pizza. First of all, we've already learned the word for tomato. Pomodoro. Pomodoro. 
And also the word for the cheese that would go in a pizza. Mozzarella. Mozzarella. Okay, so if you had una pizza con pomodoro e mozzarella, come si chiama questa pizza, Francesca? I think everyone already knows. Una margherita. Una margherita. Una pizza margherita. Sì, sì. So let's try saying that. Una pizza margherita. Una pizza margherita. Con pomodoro e mozzarella. Ma c'è anche, per esempio, prosciutto. Sì, prosciutto. We've come across that when we were talking about our panino. So that's ham, prosciutto. Prosciutto. And you can be specific about the type of ham that goes on your pizza. You could talk about cooked ham, prosciutto cotto. Prosciutto cotto. So, a pizza with cooked ham would be? Una pizza con prosciutto cotto. Okay, you might also want a, a pizza with cured ham or, I suppose, raw ham. It's a ham that's prepared, for example, parma ham or something like that. In that case, you would talk about prosciutto crudo. Prosciutto crudo. Okay, let's talk about some of the other things that you might get on your pizza. Francesca, can you give us some ideas? Sì, I can give you loads of ideas. <laughs> Um, for example, i funghi. Ah, i funghi. That's a good one. Un fungo is a fungus, which would be a... A mushroom. A mushroom, yeah. So, a, a pizza with fungus or fungi. Delightful. <laughs> so, what would that be? A mushroom pizza. Yeah, una pizza con... con... Fungi. Esatto. So, una pizza con fungi. Remember here that what we're actually saying is a pizza with mushrooms. It's very likely that if you were looking at the menu, you might see una pizza ai funghi or una pizza al prosciutto cotto and so on. And that's using a slightly different format. But here, if we're kind of making up our own pizza, if we're being specific about the kind of pizza that we're wanting, we can say simply a pizza with mushrooms. It makes perfect sense to the waiter. Aha, uh -huh, sì, sì, sicuramente. Ok, so we've got mushrooms. What else might we have? Mm, le olive. What would they be, Kitty? Olives. Olives, of course, yeah. So, le olive. Le olive. So, could you ask for a pizza with mushrooms and olives? Una pizza con funghi e, oli e olive. Yeah, what's that one? <laughs> e, for the word for and. Una pizza con funghi e olive. Una pizza con funghi e olive. Okay, maybe something else that might be popular on a pizza. Mm, sì, una pizza con uh, gli zucchini. Ah, zucchini, zucchini, what are zucchini? They are zucchini or, um, oh, um, not aubergine, courgettes. courgettes that's courgettes, the one. Yeah. So they're courgettes in UK English or zucchini in American English. Zucchini. Zucchini. Now, you can also say zucchine. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, you can use the masculine or the feminine. So just use the one you prefer. <laughs> okay, so zucchini. We'll stick to zucchini for just now. Zucchini. Uh -huh. And another word that's different in the UK and in the States would be the word that is melanzana in Italian. Yes. So we would call that in UK English. Aubergine. Yep. And in American English. Eggplant. Eggplant, that's right. <laughs> so melanzana. Melanzana. So, Katie, here is your task. You are going to order a pizza with... Cured ham, mushrooms, olives, and aubergine. Okay. Vorrei una pizza con prosciutto crudo, funghi, olive e melanzane. Perfetto. Wow. And you use that word, vorrei, I would like. That was brilliant. Well done. Now, one thing I'd like to talk about here, just before we move on, is we've covered a number of words. We've looked at fungo, a mushroom, un fungo. And if we wanted to say the mushroom, we would say... Il fungo. Il fungo. Okay. 
Making that plural, fungo, becomes fungi, just like bambino became bambini, although children and mushrooms are very different things. So we've got fungi as mushrooms. And if we want to say the mushrooms, we don't say il fungi, but i fungi. I fungi. So il fungo, the mushroom, i fungi, the mushrooms. Il fungo, i fungi. That's for your masculine words, your simple masculine words. Let's look at a feminine example. We've got an aubergine. An aubergine is una melanzana. Una melanzana. So how do we say the aubergine? La melanzana. Yep. And we know what happens to aubergines in the plural. Melanzana becomes melanzane. Ne. Ne. So to say the aubergines... We change la to le. Le melanzane. Le melanzane. Perfetto. So how would you say the sisters? Would it be le sorelle? Perfetto. Le sorelle. And how would we say the brothers? I fratelli. Perfetto. Okay, so that's straightforward for la melanzana, il fungo, becoming i fungi, and le melanzane. But we do have a couple of other situations in Italian. First of all, let's think of the zucchino. The zucchino, if it starts with a Z sound, a Z sound, how would we say a zucchini? <laughs> that sounds really strange. A zucchini. An, uh, a courgette. Uno zucchino. Good. Uno zucchino. Uno zucchino. And therefore, how do we say the Courgette. Lo zucchino. Well remembered, Katie. Lo zucchino. Now, in the plural, zucchino becomes zucchini. It's straightforward. Con zucchini. Our pizza with courgettes. Una pizza con zucchini. But when lo zucchino becomes plural, we don't use lo and we don't use i. We have to use that tricky sounding word. Francesca, help us with this. Aha. Uh -huh. Gli. Gli zucchini. Gli zucchini. It is very tricky. Gli zucchini. Gli zucchini. So, that's what happens with our lo in the plural. It becomes gli zucchini. Gli zucchini. Try one more time. Gli zucchini. Gli zucchini. I always think it helps if you imagine the letter L and then the letter Y, and then the vowel that follows, in this case, E. Li. 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 Zucchini. Li zucchini. Okay. And if you don't concentrate too much on that and go straight into the zucchini, nobody bothers. Okay. I think that is where we're going to leave this lesson because it's quite long today. We would like to do a review, but perhaps we'll do a review in our bonus episode. Uh, we also want to cover a very useful phrase for saying that you like olives or mushrooms or zucchini or melanzani and so on. But we'll leave that for next time too. So before we finish, I just want you to leave you today with a phrase and I want you to practice it every day before your lunch and dinner. Okay, and that phrase is? It's buon appetito. A very important phrase. Let's hear it one more time. Buon appetito. I have to say, by this time, I'm feeling pretty hungry. We can all say buon appetito. Buon appetito. And remember to use that phrase this week when you are eating your meals. Okay, that is all for this week. Once more, thank you again for all your reviews. Please do head over to Coffee Break Italian and let us know what you think, either by posting a comment on the website or by heading over to iTunes and posting your review there. Head over to the Facebook page and tell us all about your favourite pizza toppings at facebook.com forward slash Coffee Break Italian. And don't forget, we are also on Twitter at Learn Italian. È tutto per oggi. Grazie molte e arrivederci. A presto, buon appetito ancora. A dopo. This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.